Joining me now to discuss the Korean Peninsula tensions is Wang Pong, research associate at the China Institute of Fudan University. Um, the DPRK has been very clear that it's developing an indigenous nuclear weapons and missile technology program so that it's not reliant on any other country. Will more economic sanctions work? Because it seems like the ones that have been put in place have not really done much to dissuade uh, the development of the nuclear weapons. Well, in my view, uh, we have seen that Trump has made the threat that any trade partners with Korea will be uh, made sanctions. However, I think it's wrong, totally wrong. It will isolate America itself. And what is more, that I repeat and emphasize many, many times that sanctions does not work, do not work at all. Since the very, very early in 2006, the first time that DPRK successfully made the bomb, uh, do, uh, uh, 11 years ago, up to now, we made a lot of and more and more constrained sanctions on uh, DPRK. But so what? Now, they even have acquired a hydrogen bomb, the technology. They get advanced progress again and again. So. I think sanctions is useless in this issue. This is my answer. A uh, delegation from the ROK led by President Moon Jae-in is headed to a regional forum in Russia that will also have a delegation from the DPRK. Moon said he expects to see them at the forum, but he wasn't really clear about whether or not he plans to talk with them. Do you think it would be a good idea for them to talk? The key, the key point in resolution of the peninsula nuclear issue, in my view, is the lack of enough deterrence. Uh, America, for example, would say that Trump and his uh, opponents inside and outside the White House, and America has also faced other problems in other parts of the world, such, such like uh, uh, Syria, Middle East, Afghanistan, and others. All these have weakened the willing of America to use the military power to uh, solve this problem, to attack uh, and oppose the valid threat to Kim. Uh, on the other side, China, Russia, and South Korea and other states consider their own uh, geopolitical uh, strategies and interests. They're also afraid that the, the real war uh, between the U.S. and the DPRK. However, all these elements put together has e exactly weakened the the threat as well as the deterrence uh, uh, posed by the U.S. to Kim. So, in this way, we know that Kim used all opportunities and to launch his uh, grand march of the nu nuclear weapons. So, Mr. What, what I... Mr. Wong, I was going to say, uh, you know, you were talking about uh, China, Russia, both have uh, really pushed for a diplomatic solution. Just recently, the former special envoy for negotiations with the DPRK for the United States, Joseph Detrani, uh, wrote an op-ed piece in the Washington Times. It was titled, Only a negotiated settlement will bring peace to the Korean Peninsula. It seems there are a lot of voices saying that, but from the U.S. side, we hear Ambassador to the U.N. Uh, Nikki Haley saying that the DPRK is begging for a war. We hear a lot of tough talk on both sides, the DPRK and the U.S. What's it going to take for a diplomatic solution to emerge, and, and does this, is this kind of talk, is it helpful at all? Frankly speaking, in my view, the uh, diplomatic resolution is the optimal solution. However, in many cases, we know that people cannot choose and practice the optimal ones, but rather they have to choose the suboptimal. For example, in, in this issue, I think that China maybe always uh, like to propose uh, these uh, proposals to ask other parties to come, come together to talk. But maybe China should learn, also learn something from Kim, that Kim did not say anything. He just do it. He just does it and make force other parties to reply to in, in, in accordance. So if China did something, for example, we say that the China make its red line clearly, more clearly, and this may send more clear signals to both sides, the U.S. and DPRK, and. In this way, maybe the national interest of China, security interests, will be protected better. Mr. Wong, uh, thank you so much for joining us from Shanghai. I appreciate it.